Hi, I'm Chef David Wolfman, and today I'm going to braise bison shanks with fresh Ontario cooking onions, low and slow in the oven to make a rich dish perfect for that special occasion. Bison shanks might be a little challenging to find, so speak to your local butcher or go online to find a butcher that ships to your area. Or you could use beef shanks instead. Now here are the ingredients I'm going to use today. I have three beautiful bison shanks. I have my cooking onions with some beautiful green onions. I already have some chopped onions, a little bit of carrots and celery, some diced tomatoes, two cups of beef stock, and some red wine. As well, I have some chopped garlic, some bay leaves, a bit of salt and pepper. I have some dried basil, some thyme, dried parsley, some olive oil, and I'm gonna put a little zest of orange in there too. Now to begin, I will start by preparing the shanks. I will tie some butcher twine around them. And I do this in order to keep the meat from separating from the bone while it's cooking. Bison was the traditional food of many First Nations of the Plains prior to the arrival of European settlers. Every part of the animal was used and nothing was wasted. Bison meat provided food, its hide and fur provided material for clothing and shelter, and its bones and hooves provided for tools and even jewelry. And now I dried the shanks off using a little paper towel. I'm gonna to season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Next, I'm gonna brown the meat. I've heated my Dutch oven. I'm gonna do one shank at a time. The thing about using tough cuts of meat, such as shanks, is that you have to take your time. The meat will tenderize and fall off the bone if you cook it properly, so that's why I'm braising it. So the next step of the recipe is to deglaze my pot. I'm going to use half the wine for that. So the term deglazing is to help remove all those little burn bits that are stuck to the bottom of the side of the pan. That's where all the flavor is. So now I've got about a tablespoon of olive oil left. So I'm going to use this to cook the vegetables in. You know, before the arrival of European settlers who brought their own types of food, indigenous people used wild onions and garlic to flavor their foods. I need to get a few more things ready. I'll heat up the stock here. Now about the onions, I'm using yellow cooking onions. There are several varieties of these, but they share similar properties, which makes them most suitable for the recipes, such as the one that I'm using, which involves braising. Unlike red or white onions, yellow onions are the standard onions called for most recipes. So if you're ever wondering which onion to use, go for the yellow. Just about ready. First, I'm going to add the garlic. Now the tomatoes. I'm going to add the herbs next. The remainder of the salt and pepper, a couple of bay leaves. And now I want to add the meat and the wine that was reduced. Separate these so they sit nice and flat, so they braise evenly. Now I'm going to add the rest of the wine. And now I'm going to add the stock. And I want this to come to a boil. So now this has come to a boil. I'm going to put a lid on it and put it in my oven, which is preheated at 375 degrees. Wow, look how soft and tender this meat is now. Between the liquids, the acidity of the red wine, the length of time it was in the oven, 
and the cover being on top of this dish, the, sh the shanks are perfect now. So you want to make sure you remove the string and you can leave the bone on because the bone is the best part. That's where the marrow is. Just falling apart perfectly. Now this sauce is a little bit thin. If you wanted it thicker, just reduce it down by putting it on the stove and let it cook for about five more minutes. So I've added the sauce and now I just need to add some garnish. I've got some sliced green onions and some orange zest. Now I hope you enjoyed watching this video. My recipe is available through the Ontario Produce Marketing Association's Produce Made Simple website and social media.